Hello, my name is Cliff Speck and I work for UNHCR. In this presentation, I will discuss how COVID-19 has contributed to family separation amongst refugee children, is affecting the access to protection, including registration and asylum procedures, and its impact on quality of care. On the one hand, border closures and restricted access to territory is preventing or delaying family reunification for children who arrived ahead of their families or vice versa. As a result, these children remain separated at a time when finding appropriate uh, alternative care arrangement is proving to be exceptionally difficult. Another scenario which is playing out is that parents who left their homes in search of work uh, just before uh, restrictions were imposed are not able to return home. In all of these cases, children are left in the care of uh, a relative um, or a neighbor uh, or with siblings, some of whom are children themselves. COVID-19 has impacted delivery of services for children in general and unaccompanied and separated children in particular. While UNHCR and governments are making efforts to continue refugee registration and to implement asylum procedures, delays are continuing to be encountered. Lack of registration and uh, timely completion of asylum procedures uh, has left many unaccompanied and separated children stranded in uh, reception centers or are unable to access services because they do not have the documentation necessary to do so. Identifying appropriate care arrangements have also been affected and, as I said before, has uh, impeded family reunification efforts. Identifying appropriate care arrangements for children who are temporarily uh, separated is also not easy. Uh, the primary reason for this is that there is significant fear amongst the community about contracting COVID-19. And there is also an inability to commit to caring for additional children because of the financial implications uh, or impact of uh, COVID-19 on the household. Refugee populations are often restricted from working due to current policies uh, or state reservations to specific articles of the 51 Convention. Even in places where uh, informal work has been previously possible, uh, employment opportunities are now re reduced due to COVID-19 or stay-at-home rules. In some cases, lack of identification uh, documentation or refugee-specific barriers to obtaining travel permits are also affecting the possibility of finding work. As a result of this economic impact, uh, unaccompanied separated children are being seen as a financial burden by caregivers, um, they are experiencing discrimination within the household and or are being encouraged to go out and work, putting them at a higher risk of uh, exploitation and abuse. Another impact of COVID-19 is the uh, re uh, restriction on movement on humanitarian actors who are uh, now limited from accessing population of concern and uh, thereby uh, providing support to the most vulnerable caregivers, child-headed households, including unaccompanied children living in independent care arrangements. Ensuring unaccompanied and separated children uh, have access to timely protection procedures, um, that is uh, registration and uh, asylum procedures, facilitating family reunification, supporting uh, caregivers and children in independent living arrangement uh, requires a set of actions started by states as well as UNHCR and partners. It is vital that states ensure border policies uh, do not prevent or unduly uh, delay access to territory or facilitate family reunification. This also means facilitating communication to enable separated children continue to maintain contact with their families across the border um, pending uh, reunification and in fact expediting uh, family reunification uh, for those uh, separated in such way. Uh, families separated uh, within the country of asylum should have prioritized uh, testing where available and uh, return home so that they can continue, uh, they can uh, resume the responsibility of care and parenting role. Um, registration and asylum procedures should be prioritizing uh, unaccompanied uh, children uh, as well as separated children along with other emergency cases of course so as to ensure that these children receive uh, the necessary documentation for accessing services, including a temp uh, timely alternative care placement. For children in alternative care, UNHCR and uh, partners should have unimpeded access 
for monitoring and providing uh, support services in a manner that is safe for both uh, the children and their uh, caregivers as well as uh, the staff. This then means uh, appropriate negotiations uh, with the authorities and establishing procedures in uh, coordination with authorities. Now, another step that can be taken uh, is to review and reallocate funds that will otherwise not be spent uh, because of uh, the impact of COVID, uh, meaning programs that are probably uh, not a, a priority, being uh, channeled to support children and their families. Um, and this will, of course, require uh, reviewing and uh, revising context-specific uh, vulnerability criteria and prioritization criteria. We have seen one example uh, of this uh, in uh, Ethiopia, where UNHCR and partners have undertaken uh, efforts to provide three months of uh, cash-based support uh, to uh, vulnerable caregivers uh, in one installment, uh, after having uh, updated the vulnerability criteria. This has proven to be uh, proven to ease financial situation of the community and uh, of the families, and uh, and provide for a, a better care arrangement for uh, unaccompanied and separated children. So, in summary, COVID nineteen has affected uh, the access to territory and uh, pr uh, timely protection procedures for children, which in turn is affecting uh, the access to services. It has also uh, contributed to. Uh, uh, family separation and delays in uh, family reunification. So in terms of addressing these, uh, access to territory needs to be ensured uh, and uh, protection procedures need to be prioritizing unaccompanied and separated children. Families caring for unaccompanied and separated children should have freedom of movement uh, on par with uh, citizens of the country of asylum. Uh, UNHCR and partners need to have uh, access to monitor and provide support to those who are most vulnerable. And uh, organizations, uh, including UNHCR, need to review their budgets uh, and reallocate funds uh, towards uh, supporting uh, the most vulnerable uh, caregivers and children. I hope this contributes to a lively discussion. Thank you.